thank you for taking the time to talk with us about your amazing film. Um, yes, yeah, so my name is Lama Mugabo. I serve on the Vancouver uh, South African Film Festival Selection Committee. Now, in Losing Loretto, not only you are the main character, but yeah. you also wrote the script and produced the film. Yes. Um, <laughs> my first question to you is that uh, you portray a man devoted to his daughter, driven yes. to desperate measures to be with her. And this situation contradicts the usual negative stereotype of Black South African men. Their portrait depicts them as neglectful of family, of family duties. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. I mean, for, for me, when I wrote the story, um, I, firstly, I think it's a universal story. You know, it's not just uh, about South African men. Um, this is something that you also, you know, experience in, in, in America, you know. Um, but for me, it was a story where, where we want to see men who are fighting to be part of their children's lives instead of, you know, then leaving and not wanting to be their, 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 their part of their, of their lives. So for me, you know, this, this was one of the stories that, you know, we needed to tell. And, and for me, I wanted it to be a film that whenever we talk about, you know, uh, uh, maternity issues and, and what we call in South Africa, where, you know, um, a man is supposed to take care of their children. Um, it's, 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 it's a film that people need to refer to every time we talk about that situation. Yes. And how important was this role for you? Are you involved in other organizations or movements to change the narrative around Black South African men? Can you tell us about it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm part of, uh, you know, um, Brothers for Life and Right to Care, where we have men who come together and talk about uh, issues that affect them and also affect their families. I'm also part of, you know, a movement called Cool Dads Foundation, you know, um, like where we are encouraging men to be involved in their kids' lives, you know. Uh, and, and so, you know, when I traveled, I, I kind of realized that, you know, there's a lot of men out there who want to talk about their issues and talk about gender-based violence as well, you know, but they feel that they the minute they come out and talk about it, then, you know, there are groups who are waiting to kind of bash them down, you know? Mm -hmm. So this kind, kind of becomes a, a mouthpiece for men to be able to talk about things that lead them to gender-based violence, um, a mouthpiece for men to talk about their issues and things that they go through. Because, you know, in, 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 in this Black communities, we know that, you know, we are told that a man doesn't cry, you know, um, and, and with this, this is where we are also teaching men that it is okay to cry. It is okay to talk about your issues. Um, you crying does not mean that you are weak. It says that you are step back to gather your strength, you know. We are encouraging men to become leaders and role models for, for their families, uh, for their daughters. I mean, me and my daughters get along like a house on fire. But I'll <laughs> tell you, you know, what, <laughs> what really inspired the story was my dad, you know, um, you know uh, God rest his soul, he passed on when he was 65, but he only found out who his real dad was when he was 60. Mm. And his father already passed on. So me watching my father go to his dad, you know, to, to his dad's graveside and weeping like a child, you know, I, I, I realized that there's something bigger here. And, and, and as men, we need to change, you know, the narrative and we need to make things, uh, you know, even better. We need to be present in our kids' lives. So that's why you will see at the end of the film, the film, you know, is dedicated to my father who never mm. got to meet my father. And funny enough, his, his father was watching him as he was growing, but he never told him that I was your dad. Now, religion is prominent in this film. Yeah. Why was this essential to you? 
Look, religion for me is something that that brings people together. And, and it doesn't matter whether you are Christian, you are Muslim, whether you are traditionalist or African. For me, I feel like religion is something that brings people together. If you look back at the history of our country uh, with, uh, you, know, um, you know, the late Archbishop Desmond Tutu, he used the religion to, to unite the people and to hold meetings so that we can bring down what we call apartheid, mm -hmm. you know? So for me, I felt like religion is something that brings people together and they will be able to, uh, you know, kill this, this, this slow pandemic that is killing our families, which is paternity and, 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 and men becoming part of their, of their children's Actually. life, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about film royalties. The film industry has the ability to educate, <laughs> retain, and make a lot of money at the box office. And, yeah. But often we don't include uh, security guards and janitors when we talk about royalties. But in your yeah. film production, you share your rewards with everyone who worked on the film production. Tell us yeah. about why is this important to you? I think that one of the things that I was taught by my, my late father was Ubuntu, you know, and, and, and in English that means that a person is a person because of another person, you know, and for me, when I started this journey, I said, look, in the South African industry, we do not play, we do not pay royalties at all. You know, and you have a lot of famous people, um, you know, dying and they die as paupers. But the reason why I also did this is that I understand that what it takes to put a film together, you know, um, every piece of the puzzle is very important. From the security guard to the executive producers. So you find that most of the times when it comes to royalties, even in America, that royalties go only just to the, wow. the fame, you know, the guys that are. Yeah. But for me, it was really crucial for me to change the game and say, you know, that security guard who is watching the cars outside, who probably does not have an idea of what is happening inside, is very important. If they were not important, we were not going to have them there. So when the film makes money, then we need to pay royalties to everybody. Ubuntu. Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very good. Um, now, your daughter plays the role of Lerato. Yes. Tell us what it was like working with your daughter. What were the highlights? Were there any challenges? You know, it's such a, it's such a deep journey that I had with my daughter. Um, because, you know, this is a, this is a film that we spoke about. This is a role that we spoke about. And, you know, when I was trying to get money and funding for this film, I remember I, I even traveled to New York and I was even offered a lot of money for this film, you know, but the reasons behind, uh, you know, being offered a lot of money, I was told that I could not you uh, South African actors. I needed to have, you know, they were going to buy the script and use American actors. And for me, I remember because then I had made a promise to my daughter. So what kind of a father would I be if I choose money over, you know, my daughter? And that's when I decided to come back. And I mean, I sold everything that I had already accomplished because, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm quite big in the film industry here in South Africa, you know, and I had acquired all these things, a house, cars, all of that, but I had to sell them so that I could get money to shoot this film and produce it. So having to work with my daughter, one, was not just a dream come true for her, but it was an amazing journey for me as a father, you know, to be there for my children um, and taking from, you know, the journey that my father traveled without his own dad. You know, and so it was just, it was just, it was just too beautiful on screen. And, and I think when you watch the film, you'll realize that some scenes were not just, it wasn't acting. It was, it was yeah. a connection yeah. between father and, and daughter. Yeah.
So it was amazing. It was a, do, do something. <laughs> the scene in the bathroom when when you spent the night there it was really powerful. And yeah. uh, so thank you very much for that. Now, Luzung Lerato was uh, nominated for several awards and he won quite a bit. Can you tell us about that? What were they and how was that for you? I mean, you know, you know when you start something and and you just want to put it out and you just want to send a message. Um, and then you get all these nominations. I mean, we got we got over over 20 nominations, uh, you know, internationally. And oh, yes. up, you know, we got we got 10 international awards. That was very really humbling, you know. Um, and it validated that when you believe in something, you know, and you, you shouldn't choose money over passion. You shouldn't choose your children over, over money, you know. It was, just, it was just too humbling. And for me, you know, with the next production that we also had, um, also got a lot of international nods. And so now I'm going, you know, <laughs> Hollywood is calling. And all of them are in Hollywood, but it's all in good time and it's all in God's time. Amazing. I think that uh, the success of uh, Losing Loretto has us all excited about Bakwena Productions. And uh, we can't wait for your next uh, feature film. Um, best luck to you. And um, we can't wait. Maybe hopefully we can bring you to Vancouver next time. Have you been yes. to this? <laughs> <laughs> yes, wonderful. Uh, what, what would you like to share with uh, our viewers um, about Bakwena Productions and, and what you have in, in works? Um, you know, what I'd like to say about Bakwena Productions is that, you know, um, it, it's such a beautiful story because it's the story of of us, you know, deciding that we're not going to let someone else's yes or no determine whether we're going to be successful or not. It is us having to not have pride, but to allow ourselves to lose everything that we had so that we can accomplish, you know, um, a, a bigger goal. Oh. And mm -hmm. what they can expect from Bakwena Productions is that we are always going to be telling universal stories we are always going to be telling stories that have purpose, you know, um, stories that touch lives. We don't want to tell stories that someone, you know, goes to the movies and when they leave, they've forgotten about it. We want to tell movies that, you know, create conversations. And, you know, we just uh, did a movie as well. And it's called Tando. And I'm sure you guys are going to see it soon. You know, it's about teenage suicide and, 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 and it's teenage suicide from what we call bullying at schools, which is a big yeah. thing. That, and it's also done so well and it's done well internationally. I mean, we are sitting on eight international awards already, you know, mm -hmm. so we can't wait for you guys to see that, but we would love to come to Vancouver Absolutely. and guys and, and just share ideas, but also be authentic in the stories that we tell. You know, uh, those are very universal uh, stories, themes. Yeah. Uh, bullying is something we experience here in Canada. And yeah. I think uh, your message will resonate with audiences around the world. Good on you. Kagiso and uh, your lovely daughter. Um, tell us your real name. My name is Timulo. Timulo. <laughs> Timulo, what was it like? Um, playing this film with your dad? It was really nice. There were times where we both disagreed with each other, but we still shot the movie and we ended up with our final piece. Wow. I, do you have a role in his next film? Uh, I think so. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to be... Your... We've got a nice film that's also coming up that we've set up for her. Um, where she's going to be playing a blind, a blind girl. Awesome. This is but beautiful. we haven't we... told her yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, the secret is out. Thank you again. And um, looking forward to um, 
pitch uh, losing Loreto to our audience and uh, and once again stay healthy and uh, best luck to you. Ah, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Thank you to everybody who keeps supporting, you know, our ideas and and making them a reality. <laughs>